Hi guys and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So Radtel are really knocking it out of the park right now with its consistent release of cheap but excellent quality range of hand radio transceivers. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the new RT950. Now this is the base model, which has an extensive frequency range and a spec power output of 10 watts. Now I know what you're thinking, 10 watts, yeah, right. But wait till you see the power readings later in the video. GPS and Bluetooth is included and the APRS feature makes use of that GPS feature, while the Bluetooth feature can be used to program the radio using a mobile application via Bluetooth. According to the information shared on the Radtel's website, there will actually be a pro version of this radio also available. And looking at this comparison chart, we can see that the pro version will allow transmit on the CB band at 27 megahertz using FM. It's also stated that it will support SSB reception. Now, whether or not that SSB reception will be limited to just the HF bands, I'm not sure. It doesn't actually specify that here, but it would be the first for these cheap Asian born radios to be able to receive two meters on 70 centimeters by SSB. I guess we'll just have to wait to find out. Now, carrying on with this RT950 base model, you get everything you need in the box, including a special programming cable that connects to the right side port of the radio. You get a walls main charger, a USB-C cable, a desktop base charger, a single wibbly wobbly antenna, and of course the radio itself. And the RT950 is a pretty chunky radio. It's got some weight behind it, that's for sure. Now the battery can be charged via USB-C and there's a dedicated port for this just under a little rubber flap located at the back side of the battery. Now the battery itself, it's rated at 2600 milliamp hour, rated at 7.4 volts DC and it appears to be of the lithium polymer type. Down the left side, there's two PTT buttons and two user programmable buttons, which do actually come in handy. The programming cable will attach here behind this little flap, which is held in place via one screw. The backlit keypad is quite nice for a keypad and it's quite responsive. And within the programming software, you can assign quick functions to each of these buttons so that when you press and hold one of them, the program function will activate. Hope that makes sense. Turning on the RT950, we can see we're presented with three VFOs. Now it's probably not possible to tell via the video, but this screen looks absolutely stunning. This is no cheap dodgy screen that they've used here. It has a nice resolution, it's crisp, and it looks super nice. Now, unfortunately it's not sunny outside today, so I can't really do a sun test, but and I don't think that this radio is waterproof. And right now in the UK, we've literally got a massive downpour. Now everything is laid out quite nicely too, including some indicators at the bottom of the screen, which let you know if those features are activated or not, like APRS or Vox, for example. Now checking out the menu, we can see this looks super nice with clear graphical icons, using the arrow buttons to move around the menu and then pressing the OK button to select that item. Now the RT950 has zones, even though this is an analog radio, this is still handy to separate repeater memories by location or area, or maybe private channels that you want in their own zone for quick recalling. Now, as mentioned earlier, the RT950 has an inbuilt GPS receiver, which works really well indoors. Now I'll show you that later, but within the menu system, we can configure the APRS feature, either enabling it, setting your call sign and SSID, along with your beacon in settings. Received APRS packets can also be decoded and shown on the screen, which I'll also show you in a bit. Now going through the menu, we can program the user function buttons, enable Bluetooth, turn off beeps and voice prompts if you do not need them, and change the backlight and menu timeout values. So you get all the usual things you would find in a radio within the menu system, and it's actually quite easy to get to. You can even add channels without needing software. So what does this radio sound like? Take a listen to this while I'm receiving from my all-star node. And um, yeah, I just put headset on. I was uh, 
funny, just come on, come on to Hubnet, and I heard um, GW0NEN sort of uh, calling another station, but the other station didn't come back, but uh, thought I'd give uh, him a shout, and uh, there you were. Now, to me, that sounds pretty decent. It also sounds pretty loud without distorting. Let me know what you think about that down in the comments. Okay, so that's receiving. So how does it sound when we transmit? Again, take a listen to this. This is uh, Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey M Zero DQW. Just testing the audio transmission on narrow setting on the Radtel RT 950 M Zero DQW over. This is M Zero DQW testing the uh, transmission from the Radtel RT 950 using FM wide, using FM wide from the RT950 from Radtel, M0 DQW, over. Okay, so far it's looking good. I thought that actually sounds really nice on receive and also sounds nice on transmit. Now for those interested, I'm using an SDR application here called SDR Uno from SDR Play for receiving the transmitted audio from the radio. Now, if you remember at the start of the video, the spec sheet stated that this radio transmits 10 watts of RF power on VHF and UHF. So let's put that to the test. Here we have the power meter set to the 20 watt range and it's connected to a dummy load. With the radio set to 435 megahertz and set on high power, we see a whopping 10 watts of RF power. That's incredible considering this is a handheld radio. So let's just check out VHF on the two meter handband and this is going to be around 145 megahertz. Again, just a small smidge under 10 watts there, but still that's impressive. And this has to be one of the few radios that's actually specified to transmit at 10 watts and actually achieves it. Now definitely a well done to Radtel for this. However, at such high power, it does make me wonder how long the battery would last. Of course, there are three power levels available if you want to reduce it. Now, the big test is now spurious emissions. And even though this radio is not spec to transmit on the six meter band, it does allow you to. And as you can see here, transmitting on that six meter band at 50 megahertz is strongly advised not to. Now, you will be transmitting with nearly as much power on four or five bands at the same time. Now, this isn't really an issue of Radtel, as they do not claim that this radio is supported on six meter transmission. But what we are interested in testing is the two meter and the 70 centimeter handbands. So up at 145 megahertz, the two meter band, we see a lovely clean transmission, something which I'd hoped for and Radtel delivered. Now, as a quick side quest, and for those in the US with the 1.25 meter support, here we have the RT950 transmitting at 222 megahertz. Now it's not perfect, and I'm not sure on the regulations for this band, but that second harmonic is around 43 dB down from the fundamental. Maybe those of you that are in the US can let us know if that's acceptable or not. Okay, so let's move up to the 70 centimeter band, and yep, yeah, we're also seeing a really good response here. So Radtel, well done on making decent filters and ensuring we remain legal when using your radios. Now, airband reception is also possible using amplitude modulation, something which a lot of radios fail to do correctly. But take a listen to this. Some jet flight Yankee Golf, descent flight level 160. Descent flight level 160, descent flight Yankee Golf. Some jet flight Yankee Golf, descent left heading 325. Left heading 325, descent flight Yankee Golf. Good night, 277, report heading to London 127, for 105. London 127, 105, Super 9775. Some jet flight Yankee Golf, descend flight level 990, be level, a beam on the lead. Descend flight level 990, be level, beam on the lead, be level. And the Radtel RT950 can receive anti modulate AM airband very, very well, and it sounds super nice. Programming the RT950 can be performed using the included programming cable, and the software is available for download from the Radtel website. You can pretty much configure the entire radio using this software, and of course, it's handy if you want to back up your settings to a computer. However, I do wish they would improve the channel editing feature 
even add an import or export feature so we can load our channels into the radio in bulk without having to enter each one again, just so that we can edit it in a CSV file editor, for example. Programming via Bluetooth from an app is also possible, and the app is available from the usual app stores from your device. And one last thing to look at, and that's the APRS feature. And when enabled, any APRS packets that are received will be decoded and shown on the screen. The GPS receiver in the RT950 is also really good. It was able to get a GPS lock quite quickly, even indoors, just a few feet away from the window. Another cool little feature is a band scope, and you can program one of the function buttons to activate the spectrum analysis mode. This will quickly scan across a bandwidth that's preset and show you all the signals that it's able to see. By pressing the hash button on the bottom right of the keypad, you can kind of zoom in or narrow in that spectrum scope range. I guess it's quite a nice feature if you want to quickly see band activity. So that's the Radtel RT950. Let me know what you think about this radio in the comments below. And of course, once the RT950 Pro lands, I'll also be checking that out too. But until then, take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next video.